Hi, I'm Dan, and today we're going to be installing the Oleed DSW uh, 100 door handicap door opener. Now this is a reinstall, and some things have already been done, but before we get to that, this is what was originally there, the DSW 100. It has dip switches, and it's a little different in wiring, but the mount is the same. I'll be installing the GSW100N. Uh, it has a handheld programmer. Like I say, the base is the same, the wiring is the same, so if you do swap them out, it's no big deal. A couple things to consider when you're mounting your opener. For instance, this door opens outwards, so I'll be using the push arm, and I have an independent strike latch. Uh, the plate, the base plate, when you mount it, your power and your sensor will always be in this position. Power will always be to the left, sensor will be always be to the right, regardless of what size side your hinge is on. This is a hollow steel casement frame, and what I did to beef it up, I put two by four spanners inside there. Um, you want this to be strong without flex because they are a high torque motor. That doesn't mean they're gonna slam on you, but, and they will stop if you give them, if they get any resistance. But when they close, they close the door tightly. So you want this to be flex free. Uh, I've got this one bolted up. I guess the rule of thumb is your left edge will be with the casement and the bottom will be flush with the casement as well. If this was an opposite handed, the center, this corner would still be square with this corner. But it, a lot of our instruction manuals have metric measurements. The thing to remember is millimeters divided by 25.4 will give you inches. And then you can round a little bit. There's always some, a little bit of give. So at this point, I have my power cable through 110 BAC and I have my sensor cables through. And this my, my uh, going out to my door, my door push button, it's like an 18 gauge solid core. It's really light. Uh, some people may call it doorbell wire. You only need the red and the white. The black is not necessary. So with that, we'll be right back and we'll put the, the component system up there. Hi guys, this is Dave. And we're back with the ESW100N. We've mounted our base plate. We've mounted our assembly. I'm not going to go over the real simple things. I'm going to keep it to some of the most, most asked questions. Now, with this unit, with this setup, the door opens out. And outside is the street. I want my component assembly to be on the inside of the building, not outside where everybody can reach it. So with the push arm, you want this to be at 90 degrees to the door. And the measurements are in the manual. Go to the center, make a couple marks, and uh, you can move this arm on the assembly to to get this angle. You also have three bolts here that will that are in their slots that will allow for adjustment. Now I'm gonna open the door and we'll see where this stop is. The stop is going to contact. 
you'll have to adjust that to find your 90 degrees. Oh. Okay, uh, now if this was a situation where the door was being pulled closed. Now with this handicap door, we would like our door to open towards us and we would have our component assembly on this side of the door. Therefore we would use the pull arm assembly which I have in here. But basically it go like this and our component assembly will be here and it will open the door. The door will come towards the controller. Therefore it is a pull arm. If the door moves away from the controller, it is a push arm. Now this is our 110 volt AC. Polarity doesn't seem to matter. I've installed a ground wire as well. Uh, use whatever gauge you've got. I think you can probably go up to maybe a 16 gauge wire on these. Over here, I've wired for my push button door opener. And that's really pretty simple. The uh, component, the plug that is here, that is in case you have a master slave situation with two doors and two openers running concurrently. Uh, here again, use the solid core wire 18 gauge. It'll make your life a lot easier. Don't use the braided wire if you can avoid it. Don't torque too hard on these. These are metal screws in a plastic housing and as long as the wire is snug, it's not going to fall out, you're good to go. Okay, at this time we're going to program the unit. And the manual does say to shut the power off, and then plug in your programmer. Every time I do that, I get an error code 3. So I plug it in while it's powered up. There's a little tab on the top, and that goes on the top. Of the, whoops, push the, I push the encoder button. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. There, it's plugged in. Now on my screen, we've got bars. That's all we have at the moment. <clears throat> which is a good sign. Now we'll push. We're going to push. Sorry, I have to get my glasses. We're going to push mode. And here we're in F1. Now in the manual, it gives you all the settings for F1. Your, your parameters. And what you want to set them to be. Sometimes it says 0 through 9. I found it best to use at least a digit of numerical value of one. Uh, when you go through push set, all of these are explained in the manual. When you get to the last one, you set, we'll go back to mode. Now at this point your door may swing, go through some cycles. You just got to ride it through, let it go through its cycles but while the parameters are being uploaded and you'll be good to go. It's, it's a little frustrating. It was for me when I saw the door open and close, open and close. But it was cycling through, the parameters were being uploaded. It's not an instant upload, it takes a little time. So once you've gone through your parameters, and we're back to this, and the door is cycled through, then you can unplug, unplug your program. I found it important to make sure this is square, this is level. Your door will 
push open easily. Now with this setup, my lock is independent of the door open. That's what this setup required. So to open this, you would have a key card, then you would push the door open. If you have to have that key card to open this door. I, I, there's no way I can just have a door on the street and somebody comes by and pushes the button and walks in. So, push button works nicely. Door speed is good. You may have to slow that down, but we're in a cold climate here and we tend to open and shut pretty quickly because of the weather. There is an upgrade for the push button switch. There's also a wireless. I chose this particular unit and I will be upgrading to a heavier switch. So in the next video, we'll be doing the uh, keyless remote. It's real easy. A couple touches of the button and it's good stuff. So with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Feel free to contact tech support if you have any trouble and uh, get back to you. Thank you.